Hello, Year 13. So we are here for video four of the American Dream uh, A-level revision videos. Our previous video, video three, had concentrated on some of our um, presidents following Truman all the way to Nixon. Uh, we were looking at the president's personalities and the other factors that affected them as leaders of America. This net specification point actually concentrates a little bit more on some of those later presidents and uh, the reasons why the American public were losing faith in the presence of America. So the specification point is um, a decline in confidence 1968 to 80. This is one of the most turbulent times in American political history where confidence was at an all time low for our presidents, uh, confidence in the role of the president and what they were doing and their actions and on their leadership of the country was um, you know, at an all time critical level um, where American presidents first a really extremely difficult job on running the country. So to give some some basics to, to kind of get a start, and if we're looking at an introduction to an essay, for example, we might refer to that fact that by 1974, 40% of the American public said that they trusted the government. You know, that is a small figure, you know, only 40% of the population believe that they can trust the government, let alone uh, trusting certain policies uh, and, and, and having an agreement of, of good of war and all those kind of things. Uh, contrast that within 1960, where 70% of Americans had said they trusted the government. So without trust of the public, your role as president is going to be very, very difficult. So we need to understand why this lack of confidence in the government and this lack of trust, uh, where it came from and the reasons for that. So we kind of can introduce some of the key ideas and some of the key arguments to go with this lack of confidence. The first one can be the uh, growing influence of media, and that can also go into theme three when you revise that as well. Uh, the, the media was now, you know, most American people had a television set. A lot of Americans had uh, most, pretty much every American had a radio. So news stories are widely reported and you have this constant flow of information from the news and from TV programs that reflect uh, real world events that are putting more of a scope on the issues that are happening in America at the time. Uh, there's more access to stories, more access to the front line in wars. Um, people want to know what is going on all the time and they trust the voices that they hear on TV. Uh, now, the media had changed the role from maybe the earlier um, forms of media in the uh, 1940s, 1950s, where you're kind of reporting what the government doing. If you go way back to the radio with the fireside chats in the 1930s, the president's access to the public, and it was a real positive. Now, as we get to the 1960s and 70s, the media see it as uh, their opportunity to roll, uh, uncover uh, deception, uncover bad decision making, and actually their role is to try and look for the deeper meaning behind stories rather than just reporting it as it is. So the media has a huge role and it's going to have a huge role in some of the other factors that we're going to talk about um, from here on. So the first thing that, uh, or the next thing, sorry, that could uh, grow a, a lack of confidence among the American public would be the White House administration itself. Ever since FDR had been president, um, the number of people working in government had been very large and was continuing to grow with different departments, uh, all with their own individual focuses. Um, and the high number of people working in the White House and working for the government inevitably did lead to some issues. Because if you have a high number of people working in government, it's very difficult for the president to keep a handle on all those people, at, you know, all the time. And this means that um, so it does leave it open to some people making mistakes, some people um, taking decisions without the president's approval, some people abusing their position of power. Uh, an example that you could use if you were thinking about this in an essay might be um, in the early 1970s, Richard Nixon's vice um, president, vice presidential candidate um, was uh, resigned or was, or was forced to resign on bribery charges, um, that taking money, um, uh, which also led to some tax evasion charges as well. So we have um, issues there with the White House administration and people abusing their position. Um, and also there is the fact that as the presidential campaigns get bigger and there's more media linking with the first factor, um, there's more money into election campaigns as people, presidential candidates and um, congressional candidates and so on are, are campaigning a lot and putting things on TV, uh, giving more speeches, uh, reporting to the radio, hiring parts out from newspapers, that meant there was more donations needed. With more donors, you have businesses perhaps or unions saying they will fund campaigns, but they want something in return. And so that also caused issues, um, even led to in 1971, a, um, a government law being passed or a federal law being passed 
which uh, limited the amount of money that could be given in one single donation, which was then highlighting, I guess, for the American public that there must have been a problem. You don't make a law trying to ban donations on something if there wasn't a problem in the first place. We also have scandals, the most famous being the Watergate scandal of the 1970s, where the Democratic headquarters are um, burgled and there are links made, very close links made to the president, Richard Nixon, which forced him to resign. Um, <clears throat> this really made uh, confidence in the American president go to rock bottom, uh, that the fact that an American president was willing to potentially spy and get information on his opponents, um, you know, using these underhand tactics. And this is all played out in the media as well, the trials and the kind of reports of what was going on and the, and the reporters from the Washington Post who, who had um, discovered some of the information linking Nixon. This is all being played out in the media. This big news story um, pushes the president to resign. Um, any, any law changes that are made from this then are linked back to the Watergate scandal. For example, there's the Privacy Act in 1974, which gave every person working in a government agency the right to look at what files were being held on them. Again, <clears throat> people are saying, why does there need to be a law? Why is that not something you can do anyway? There is an increase in lack of confidence, not just to do with Watergate, but obviously Watergate is the major scandal, um, you know, that, that really makes people think, are all politicians corrupt? We also have, uh, this is a time of real social unrest in America. President, uh, protest is spreading across America from all sides. We have uh, anti-Vietnam War protests, we have, um, protest uh, about uh, racial segregation and the fact that the Civil Rights Act wasn't having the impact that um, people felt. Martin Luther King has died to, at the end of the 1960s and that led to riots and protesting. Um, there are, there's a rise in more liberal young thinkers who are looking for more equality and looking for change uh, and trying to support maybe some of the anti-poverty policies of Lyndon Johnson, whereas on the other hand you've got protesters and campaigns set up to try and bring back the conservative right in America and they're campaigning against there's a lot of TV um, reports and stuff like that people trying to protest people don't understand what's going on there seems to be so much unrest so much protest police firing at protesters the Kent State University shootings in 1970 for example where four university students are are killed um, protesting against the Vietnam War people um, whatever their agenda whatever their whatever their political beliefs are thinking what is going on in our country there is mass panic mass um, you know seems to be a daily occurrence of protesting in America and that causes uh, violence as well, riots, um, reactions to riots. The Vietnam War also presented a lot of issues. We had people returning from the Vietnam War with horror stories um, and that obviously boosts that kind of um, social pressure on America as well um, and all of those things, all of these things are being reported on the news almost on a 24-7 basis. Um, like I said, some of the right-wing conservatives are feeling uh, that uh, America is becoming too liberal um, and that might have resorted to the election of Richard Nixon at the um, end of the 1960s. But we've got this huge social pressure matched with the economic crisis that's going on at the time as well. Uh, we, the Watergate scandal is, is just one example of where the American government mishandles events. Uh, the conduct of the war in Vietnam uh, led, leads to lots of criticism towards the American presidents. You know, the famous song, Hey, Hey, LBJ. How many kids did you kill today? Links with Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson wasn't organising the killing of children, but the fact that the uh, weapons being used and the authorisation of certain weapons, the tactics being used by the American military always comes back to the government. If you've sent troops there and, and bad things are happening, you know, the burning down of villages, um, the, the awarding of ice cream for kill counts in Vietnam, all of those things are linked with the presidency and puts a, puts a, a stain on the American president and that, that conduct is associated with our presidents. We also have things like the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant problem where um, in Pennsylvania, a nuclear power plant in 1979, there is a shutdown and there's reports of an emergency, but the federal and local reporters, uh, for, uh, government agency, sorry, report completely different stories. And so people were saying, are you trying to cover up? What are you trying to cover up? How dangerous is, it, is this in Pennsylvania and in, in where Three Mile Island was? People had evacuated the area, worried about uh, nuclear exposure. So there, there is, um, you know, a lot of distrust towards government. Uh, what are they covering up? And that can, again, kind of stem to some of the media reporting. And finally, you can look at the presidents themselves. You know, Lyndon Johnson lost uh, support for the way he handled Vietnam. Um, some of the troops that he sent in were, were going in without Congress approval. Nixon himself, not only with Watergate, but was seen as somebody that was awkward with the media, um, was caught on tape swearing and, and being quite abusive. Um, 
Gerald Ford as a president was seen as very weak. Um, he pardoned Nixon, which people thought that was 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 the wrong thing to do. Uh, Jimmy uh, Gerald Ford as well in his presidency, lots of gaffes where he falls over um, while skiing, falls over getting off a plane, those kind of things. Jimmy Carter, very similar, um, very awkward in the media. Seen as a very weak politician, didn't see somebody that was going to get America through the economic crisis of the 1970s that came about. Ford and Carter, um, a really uh, amazing fact from the time when it got to the 1976 election where Jimmy Carter won, uh, there was a poll which suggested that 75% of American people didn't actually um, believe that Ford or Carter were the right person for the job. Now, Carter wins the election and people were almost chosen because they'd rather have Carter than Ford, but 75% of the American population said that they actually didn't want either of those people in charge of the nation. So that that's a, a telling comment on to um, whether people trusted and whether people believed in their in their presidential candidates. So there are tons of questions that could that could go with this information we've done today. Um, you know, how far do you agree that the news media was the most significant influence on the decline in confidence? That directly links to this PowerPoint, and that's a that's a really um, interesting essay to answer. You need your specific examples, but you can use all of the factors mentioned in the in the PowerPoint today. To what extent were the styles and actions of the president responsible for the changes in levels of public confidence? So you're actually going all the way from from Hoover all the way to Jimmy Carter, and you're thinking about what things influenced the way um, the people or people felt about the president. And is it the styles and actions or is it some of the factors mentioned here? Uh, how far do you agree that Americans people trust in the presidency changed in the years 1933 to 80? So you look at that change through time, you can look at it at blocks of time. Perhaps you could look at times of trust and times of uh, not trusting. Um, you could talk at this in yes, no. You could have some a couple of paragraphs saying that the, the people's trust did change. You can in some way say that no, it didn't change. You might look at certain areas of America. So did the presidency change in terms of media? Uh, handling of events. Um, you can look at different areas and kind of have positive and negative examples of where confidence or trust in the presidency did change. How far do you agree that the media was the main reason for change of presidency? Very similar to the ones above. Uh, and then how far do you agree that confidence was the most significant factor in both the affluence of the 50s and the crisis of the 70s? The reason I bring that one is in the 70s, you could be using uh, the information uh, on Jimmy Carter, for example, or the lack of trust in people. Um, how can that contribute to the economic crisis of the 1970s? So it's just a very minor example that could be used in that answer. If we're looking at um, television as well and living standards, again, the information from today's PowerPoint can be used as examples um, as confidence can also have an influence on those as well. So hopefully the information from the last slide could help you answer these questions. Hopefully uh, you've taken a bit from today and I'll see you for video uh, six.